High-speed sync is easily one of the most misunderstood concepts in all of photography. Learning how to use it properly will make you a more well-rounded photographer, and it'll help you to create those eye-catching portraits that you've been striving for. In this video, we're going in-depth unlike any video that you've seen on YouTube so far. This is going to be a high-speed sync masterclass that will help you no matter what stage of the lighting game that you're currently in. I'll explain what high-speed sync is, how it works, and more importantly, how you could use it to take beautiful portraits on location. Let's go. In order to understand what high-speed sync is and the problems that it solves, we have to first take a look at what standard sync speeds are. Anytime you're firing a flash with your DSLR or mirrorless camera, you have to be aware of what the flash sync limit is for your specific camera. For most modern cameras, the maximum shutter speed where you can sync your flash with your camera is typically somewhere between 1 1 60th of a second to 1 2 50th of a second or less. If you have a shutter speed set on your camera at or below those speeds, your flash and camera can communicate with one another without any kind of issues. You'll find in outdoor daylight situations that shooting with a wide aperture, something like f1.8, will cause you to have to increase your shutter speed much higher than 1 2 50th of a second in order to get a decent exposure for your environment. Unfortunately, if you take your shutter speeds and you boost them above those values that we talked about earlier, you'll begin to see the shutter curtain in your image. This is where high speed sync comes through to help you out. With high-speed sync, you can sync your camera and your flash at shutter speeds above that standard sync speed limit of 1 2 50th of a second. When you're shooting portraits outdoors, this allows you to use your shutter speed to expose for your background any way that you'd like, and then you could use your lights to light up your subject. Understanding how flash works with your camera is really important. There are going to be times where high-speed sync might be the perfect solution, and there's gonna be other times where it still won't get you the image that you are looking to get. In order to understand all of this, let me give you a visual demonstration of what's happening inside of your camera when you're using a flash. I'm going to show you how the shutter works on the Sony Alpha 7R4, but pretty much any DSLR or mirrorless camera will work in a similar way. With that, let's take a closer look at how flash sync works in depth. Let's start off first here with our standard flash sync. This is with your shutter speed below 1 2 50th of a second, which would be using the standard flash sync on your camera. Um, this light here is gonna represent our flash. And so here's our sensor, first curtain, second curtain. When your flash fires, okay, so your flash is going to light the entirety of that sensor, right? So it goes boom, flash goes off. When this happens, it lights the entire sensor and then this first curtain begins to make its way up. This is on the Alpha 7R4, of course. And then the second, cut, uh, the second shutter curtain will begin to drop, okay? And it covers up the sensor. Then this one opens up, this one comes back up, and then you're ready to take your second photo. Your sensor is only exposed to that light for just a brief moment, right, at 1 2 50th of a second, but the light has the opportunity to light the entirety of the sensor when that flash goes off when you're using it at the standard flash sync limit of your camera. So that's all gravy. Let's take a look at what happens when you set your shutter speed higher. Let's say it's at that 1 3,000th of a second. Here's how things change. So here's what happens when you have your shutter speed set above the flash sync limit of your camera. So at this point, what will end up happening is when your flash fires, instead of having the opportunity for it to light the entire sensor or your film, uh, what will end up happening is as that light fires, that shutter curtain is already moving, right? It's already making its way. So if you remember in the first example, the flash goes off, it lights the whole sensor, shutter kind of follows afterwards. Um, but what happens is if you have it at say one three thousandth of a second or one four thousand or really anything above one two fiftieth of a second, that shutter moves so fast that what ends up happening is when that flash goes off, it's already, the shutter curtain is already blocking part of the sensor. So what ends up happening is you'll get basically the, the photograph showing the shutter curtain 
at some point through the image. So let's say, for example, if you're at like one, I don't know, one four hundredth of a second, when that flash fires, maybe it's only blocking like the bottom part of the sensor. So you'll just see like a little tiny portion of the bottom of your photo will have a dark line uh, on it. But if you were at a higher shutter speed, it could be, let's say if you're at one, I don't know, 6,000 or one eight thousandth of a second, when that flash fires, that shutter curtain might already be covering the entirety of the sensor. So you may not see anything. It might just show up as like a, a dark image. So that's basically what's happening if you have your shutter speed set to anything above your flash sync limit. And that's why you can't take a picture with flash if you are above those settings. Now let's take a look and see what happens with high speed sync and see how this kind of changes everything. So with high speed sync, what ends up happening is you have to have a flash and a trigger that is compatible with high speed sync. And what will end up happening is instead of it having one pulse of light, it's gonna have multiple pulses of light. So <laughs> just to demonstrate this, it'll basically be like this, but super fast, right? So what'll happen is it'll be pulse, 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 right? And then the shutter curtain closes, the second one closes, right? Just like it did in that first example. The shutter still operates the same way, but what will end up happening is that that flash, instead of just giving one pop of light and then being done, it basically gives you multiple pulses of light. And you don't even see it. It's like pretty much invisible to the human eye. But basically that's what high speed sync does is it will actually pulse the light while that shutter curtain is traveling across the sensor. So that way every piece, every part of the sensor during that shutter's travel will actually get some light. And that's how you're able to take a photograph using high-speed sync using a flash. So now that we've talked about how high-speed sync works, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate it outdoors. I've got my lovely model, Caitlin, here to help us to try this out. I'm gonna be using the Alpha 7R4 with a 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master lens. Usually when people use high-speed sync outdoors, it's because they want to shoot wide open. So I'm gonna use the F1.2 aperture with this lens to be able to shoot wide open and show you where we run into issues when you're trying to sync that with a flash. So to get things started, I'm gonna show you the natural light shot at F1.2. Then I'm going to show you the F1.2 shot with the strobe without high speed sync so you can see what happens there. And then I'm gonna show you the shot with high speed sync to kind of finish things off. So let's get started with that first look, which is showing you F1.2 with natural light. Now let's take a look at what the shot looks like if we're shooting at F1.2 and we have a, a flash and a trigger that is not high speed sync capable and I'll show you the problems that we run into there. Okay, and then now what we're gonna do is we're going to use high speed sync to allow us to control the ambient light, to control the background, and to shoot with that F1.2 aperture. So let's see what those shots look like. So the awesome thing with high speed sync is that using it, you're able to control the exposure of your environment and the exposure of your subjects independently, which is awesome. So you can underexpose your backgrounds, you can expose them properly or overexpose them by using your shutter speed. And then using your flash, you're able to use that wide open aperture to use a strobe or a speed light or whatever it is that you have 
and expose for your subjects independently. You could use hard light modifiers, you could use soft light modifiers. The options and the opportunities really are endless when it comes to lighting your subjects in really creative and really interesting ways. Now, what is the downside, right? Because this all sounds great, but the downside is that with high speed sync, unfortunately, because that light is pulsing, you're not gonna be able to get that full power out of that strobe. So. Uh, that could potentially mean that the light output might not be enough given your certain shooting environment and shooting situation, which is something that you want to keep in mind. Now, if you do want to be able to use the full power of whatever it is that you're using, in that case, high speed sync may not be right for you. What you may want to do is consider using an ND filter. So I have a video that I created using uh, ND filter shooting with strobes outdoors. I'll link that video here at the end of this video. And also I have, this is the second video actually in this series. I have two more coming out. Uh, one of them is gonna be comparing high speed sync versus using those ND filters. And then the final video in the series is gonna be using high speed sync, using ND filters, shooting within the flash sync limitations, and just kind of seeing what the differences are between those three shooting styles. So. If you're into this type of content, please do me a favor. And if you found this video helpful, enjoyable, whatever the case might be, leave a like on this video because it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, with sharing this with other photographers who might want to learn this as well. And make sure you subscribe so you can be notified when those videos post up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.